government's move on coupling for power exchanges. The power ministry recently asked the Central Electricity Regulatory Commission, which is CERC, to undertake the process of consultation and implementation of market coupling in a timely manner. How will this impact power exchanges? We spoke to IEX earlier, but now we are joined by Naveen Singh, who is the head of business development at Hindustan Power Exchange, uh, to discuss the possible impact of this one, what it would mean for the market overall as well. Uh, Mr. Singh, uh, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, that's the basic first question. Uh, what is market coupling? What would the impact on the overall power exchange sector be, and especially for a company like yourself? See, market coupling essentially in the context that see, uh, that MOP is talking about is price coupling. Okay, so as of now, the three exchanges, they discover three different prices for the collective, collective segment. Uh, with price coupling, there would be one single price for the entire market. And that would ensure that the collective markets, which tend to move to the dominant exchange in all uh, scenarios, would basically, uh, that the scenario would be taken care of. The other exchanges and the new possibilities which lie ahead going forward also would have an opportunity to participate in the collective segments. Uh, mm -hmm. For an exchange like us, which basically started into operation in July of last year, uh, we have gained 35% market share in, uh, in in the TAM segment that we operate in. Okay, but this collective segment there was limited possibility to move. With coupling, it gives us it opens up the entire market for us. We see probably a hundred times potential upside for us from the current levels. Uh, our stocks don't, don't get traded as of now, but uh, soon uh, we'd also be there on exchanges uh, talking about uh, the power markets in general on a regular basis. Okay, so your energy, your, your enthusiasm is quite palpable at the moment, Mr. Singh. But, you know, we were having a conversation with IEX a while back and they said that it may or may not go through in its entirety, right? The CRC will, of course, hmm. have to take that decision. A process will be put into place. Are you confident that, uh, you know, this could go through? And can you just put some numbers to it? Uh, if it does go through, then what could the impact be on a company like yours? Just some more numbers, if you can add. See, uh, the, the language that has been used in the... Uh, in the circular which came out, uh, it is abundantly, abundantly clear that uh, it has to be implemented. It remains with an honorable CRC to frame the necessary regulations and the policy and the framework in which this mechanism would operate. Uh, there's definitely a lot to do. Uh, it would definitely take four to five months at the very least to implement this reform. It has been long pending. Not that much discussion has not happened on this subject. There's been a lot of discussion that has happened in the past. So the market is well prepared uh, for this kind of a change. The only thing is the regulatory framework, uh, framework has to be there in place. Uh, as of now, in the dead market segment, uh, IEX had the complete monopoly. Uh, going forward, that monopoly definitely goes away. Uh, it gives options to all the exchanges who are there currently operational, three of them uh, in the market. And therefore, the, it would entirely boil down to the kind of service levels that each, of, each one of them have. Mm. So if we can achieve... 35% uh, market share in just 10 months, we see no reason why we would not be having 40-45% right. market share in the in the collective segments going forward. You know, that Mr. is the Singh, impact that IEX yeah. Both IEX and you are coming from different ends of the spectrum. You stand to gain, they stand to lose their near monopoly status as you point out. I'm sure the truth is somewhere in the middle because I just want to understand, this morning, uh, you know, the IES guy said that there is some... Uh, what do you say, grey area in interpreting this mm. and uh, market coupling is when you couple different geographies, perhaps not price or, you know, couple the exchanges itself. Is there anything in the law which leaves things open for interpretation? Just want to understand that. How clear is the wording as per you? Or could there be a case of, you know, your interpretation being uh, different from theirs? So I think uh, there's no ambiguity in the, uh, I mean the in the document that has come out. Uh, market coupling essentially means price coupling. That is what power ministry also means. So geographically, India has always been connected. The five regions in India got connected way back in 2012. So there's no region level connecting that connection that is going to happen. It has already happened. So it, uh, the wheel cannot be invented again. It is the price coupling which was pending for long has been under discussion. Uh, and, and, and there have been regulatory interventions also that, that organizations like, uh, like us have made. The other exchanges have also made it. There are the entities in the power sector who have basically pushed for coupling for quite some time. And it is essentially price coupling. So when we are talking about price determination, 
it would basically become a common number for the entire market and the price would be one and therefore all the exchanges based their service levels would have the opportunity to gain market share okay, okay. so mr singh just one clarification here is the implementation plan for specific market segments or is it across for tam dam tam is where you gain market share as well and when you say that it's coupling of pricing uh, how does the pricing differ right now between the three uh, how is it priced right now did ix have higher market share because their pricing was lower no uh, there's no <laughs> price determination that is happening so they cannot price it lower and we cannot price it higher it is a price mm -hmm. discovery mechanism and at any exchange that it happens it happens uh, through the discovery mechanism only so so from that perspective there's no uh, difference in what each of these exchanges do the only problem is this is a collective market and in the collective markets the the volume tends to move towards the dominant exchange in all possible scenarios okay so coupling becomes important if other exchanges have to uh, have to get a market share in that so oh. this is true for all collective segments i can give you an example in the in let's say the pet petrochemical space you have one petrol mm. price across the country and therefore while deciding which petrol pump you go you just have to choose the service levels that each of these exchanges offer the service sure, sure, level sure. could be as easy as the near i mean the uh, the nearness of that place to your place okay, so yes that is what saying got it. no we understood that point i just wanted a clarification on the market share because you know when we spoke to iex they said that their market share has fallen quite a bit in the last uh, you know few months earlier it was 94% last year it's fallen to 89% you spoke about a That's 35% right. market share that you enjoy so the numbers don't really match can you tell us how much is has your market share gone up in that specific segment so our market share was zero last year uh, we started our operations in july 2022 and therefore mm. all the volume that we have gained is from the existing exchanges okay so from that mm. uh, from that perspective the number that you see falling for iix there is some contribution that we have made uh, and and there is some mm. contribution that the other exchange also there in the market has made okay there is a general movement away from the tam segment to the planned segments of the market where people, uh, where entities have started procuring more mm. monthly weekly and the daily segments that also has led to the fall in the dam volumes and that basically hurt, hurts obviously the dominant uh, market player so that is where uh, our uh, i mean our sort of lies we basically have been able to uh, bring in new service levels to this industry and that is where most of the participants who have been trading with us have almost shifted their entire volumes to us that right. uh, that is what we expect going forward in the coupling domain as well and that is where we are confident of uh, greater volumes going forward you know uh, it, it's so, sorry just one clarification i didn't get that so your market share was zero earlier uh, last year and now what does it what is it exactly see in the term head market segment which essentially contributes around 20% hmm. of the market i mean on on an average in, on a yearly level we have been able to achieve 35% market share so you can just imagine right. 20 so your overall market share basically yeah okay okay so it's basically yes. about 7 8% of the overall market uh, which of which uh, iex is around 89% so of 30% of the market you have close to around 35% share that's roughly 10% or that's like it, you're saying 20% that yeah get that um uh, you know the embed yeah. the market based uh, economic dispatch which uh, actually was uh, you know looking at centralized scheduling and dispatching of the annual electric capacity that was on the cards as well that was expected but there was no mention of that in uh, uh, the order that came by um do you think that would be that would that could change things obviously that would because as of now it's like generated around 7 to 8% of the power 7 to 8% of the entire power generated in the country stated through exchanges embed would hmm. basically take that percentage up to probably 50 to 60% okay so there's a 10 times increase in the overall volume that can get traded over exchanges embed is a is a is a, is a reform which would take a little time to implement because there is a concurrence of states also which is required so not that it is not mentioned in the document that essentially means that embed is not on cards it is definitely on cards there is a lot of discussion that is already happening with respect to that the only thing is ki coupling is clearly a different aspect mbed would basically only add volume to the entire market so 6 have you heard anything uh, yeah the embed and 
coupling basically ensures volume flow to all the other exchanges. Right. No, no, so we understand the opportunity out here. If Embed does come by, the overall addressable market for all the players will increase. So in that case, no one will be looking at, you know, the limited share of the market which is currently available. That may change things drastically. But is there anything you've heard on uh, Embed specifically? You said it'll take some time to implement. What are the challenges in implementing an Embed? And is that really a possibility in the near future? Embed basically needs states to come on board because what you are essentially doing under the Embed mechanism is that you are basically, I mean, uh, you're basically taking, uh, going to take the schedules of the state generators as well. So if a state generator in UP is not getting scheduled because its power is at, let's say, 6 rupees, but that same generator can get scheduled, scheduled for the consumption that Maharashtra has, the Embed mechanism would ensure that. And this this uh, I mean this control or state power generation is something where the state also would have some uh, opinion to give and that is where the collective opinion decision making is going to take time that is where what okay. I'm saying that probably okay. it would take a year or so a little more okay mr. Singh I just want to understand you said there's no question it's abundantly clear that these uh, norms would be, would be implemented but IEX told us right. there would be a consultation paper and they will give their commentary there. I wanted to understand uh, where do things stand right now? Is it just a circular where consultation, uh, where comments will be required? How long will it take to be implemented? Uh, what's your take here? So that is correct. Uh, CRC for every reform goes through a consultative process. Uh, the white paper probably should come out very soon. Uh, we expect it to come out probably in a month or so or maybe two months. Uh, that would initiate the discussion around market coupling and, and the different op op uh, options that basically market coupling could possibly have, okay, the, the different ways in, this in which coupling can be implemented and therefore that discussion would happen. It would take probably three to four months uh, before all those discussions translate into final regulations and the hmm. implementation of market coupling. Okay, one final question from my end. You know, when we were speaking to IEX, uh, the gentleman said that Despite everything, all of this talk of market coupling is very confident of a 15% growth for the industry uh, going forward, at least in the next couple of years. What are your own thoughts on how much the industry could grow? And for HPX particularly, what are the growth you know, trends looking like? For the industry, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely aligned. I think it could be a little more also. Uh, the kind of uh, industrial development that we are seeing across the country, the kind of commercial growth that is happening, we see that percentage to hold. For us, as we said, I mean, as I said, uh, we have just started. So for us, mm. the potential is not 15, probably 1500 percent. We, we we have just started. We we have a lot of lot of ground to cover. All right. Now, finally, you know, just speaking about the market itself, uh, just tell us a little about you know uh, what if things stay as they are. What will you do then? to gain further market share from IEX, would there be further competition from them? Because they are also saying that while their market share has fallen, they are looking to increase it back to 92-93% from the 88-89% it is right now. And on the overall market itself, where is the short-term pricing currently? Where is it headed? Um, structurally high prices, will they drive participants away from short-term power exchanges? Not necessarily. If you've seen, if you've observed the power market, Long-term PPAs have stopped happening. There were very, very few long-term contracts which are getting entered into. And therefore, uh, most of the load growth that you see across the country is being met through short-term contracts. Okay, so clearly the short-term market is poised to grow. It has already grown at a very significant pace and most of that portion has gone to exchanges because of the flexibility that exchanges have in introducing new contracts. Uh, the long duration contracts introduced by exchanges recently have seen a lot of positive support from the market. So we expect the short term market to definitely grow. Uh, okay. Moreover, I mean all the generation, all the generation that you see coming in the country is from RE. Now RE, by its very nature, is I mean right. is, is a little less predictable, and therefore oh. short term market has a lot of to, lot of role to play to make it firm and ensure that uh, the buyers are able okay. to meet their requirements. All right, Mr. Singh, thank you so much for joining us today and giving us your perspective on what these norms could mean for the market, for the competitors and for the players as well. Uh, it was a pleasure speaking with you today. So that's the word coming in from HPX. They